initially I had made a little PowerPoint about mom poster syndrome and I practiced it on my husband last night, which he was a great listener. Um, and then I was like, well, if all the people that are coming to the session, listen to the podcast and read the blog, then they're already going to know pretty much all that content. So I was like, maybe we should just do like a fun Q and a when Alana, who is like the person that heads mom's TO and she created mom fest, she asked me to do this session and she was like, just do whatever you want to do. So I was like, well, maybe I can just switch it up and do a Q and a, if you go to festival goers at the top, then click breakout room. Oh, cool. All right, so what time is it? 12.05. Does anybody have questions or should I go on about mom poster syndrome or does anybody have any questions? You can ask me anything. We can talk about whatever mom experiences or not even mom related experiences. Does anybody want to come on camera? Because apparently I can let people on camera as well. Um, so yeah. How did you find such amazing friends? <laughs> so most of my friends and my mom can confirm this are friends that I've had for a long time. Oh, there's my mom. Hi, mom. So, you know, I have friends that I had from elementary school, from high school, and then some from university. Um, I was just watching this thing and they were talking about how it's so hard as an adult to meet new adult friends. Uh, and I can totally relate to that. We, we don't really live near that many friends. Kathy lives like 45 minutes away. But like, how do people meet friends when you're an adult? Especially during COVID because, you know, I'm not going to yoga classes or even if I was, like, how do you make adult friends when you're not in school anymore? How do you guys meet friends? Like, is there like a Tinder for friends? That would be actually an amazing idea. Tell me, Kathy, how do you find amazing friends? There is a Tinder for friends? Oh my God. That's actually amazing, I love that. I guess a lot of people meet friends, but maybe not even like at their workplace. But now with COVID, most people are working at home. It's kind of like isolating. Yeah, exactly. I would, it's definitely hard to meet mom friends. As moms, it's weird. Like you feel lonely all the time, but then also it's hard to like maintain contacts and maintain friendships because even though you're insanely busy, it's like, you feel lonely and like you want to go do things with other people, but it's also a struggle to get out of the house sometimes. So yeah. Oh, my mom lost sound. Now that I have a baby, I just click with other mom friends. I was getting the oil change, started talking to this other mom and now we regularly go for walks. That's so nice. I used to, when Milo was really young, I went to, um, like an infant play group thing that was put on by the city. They're called early on centers in Ontario. And me and two of my friends would always bring our kids there. I think it was once a week. And it was so nice just to have a plan for the next day to like, oh, at this time we're gonna get ready. We're gonna go uh, do whatever craft or activity they had set up. Um, and it was fun, even though it was like an hour long thing, It like made your whole day because you were getting out of the house and doing something. Neighborhood playgrounds, yeah. I find now with COVID though, it's, I know like, I don't know how people are doing it with really young babies in the time of COVID because it's even me when I bring Milo to the park, it's awkward because you know, I'm not going to scream at a mom from across the park and then you don't want to get super close to people. And then even with Milo, when he goes to play or like goes towards other kids, I'm always looking at their parents like, 
you know, are you okay with that? Like, do you want me to go grab him? It's such an awkward situation. But then someone that I was talking to about this specific topic was like, if, if they're really that against having their kids come into contact with other kids, then they shouldn't be taking them to a neighborhood park, which I completely agree with. So I've kind of been more relaxed about it, but I still find people, even in the grocery store, like people are not friendly like they used to be at all. It's just kind of like go in, do what you have to do. Everything's awkward. Everybody has a mask on and yeah. Some like, can you even tell when people are smiling? Like it's just totally awkward. Um, let's see what people are saying. Neighborhood parent friends. Yeah. Like in our neighborhood, there's so many kids, but like, how do you meet the parents? It's, it's strange. Yeah. I'm assuming most people are in Ontario because this is a mom's TO event. So I'm sure all of you are familiar with the early on uh, centers. I just started following you recently. Love your stories. How did I get started? So I get asked this question all the time because I think a lot of people are like, you have a PhD in psychology and you make TikToks and that's true. Um, but yeah, after I had Milo, I was pregnant and had Milo during my PhD program. So I did my 12 month maternity leave. And then at the end of my maternity leave, I was like, oh, like I wanted to do something creative because I hadn't done anything in 12 months. And I just had a little bit of my PhD to do to finish. So I started a blog and I didn't even mean for it to be all mom related content, but obviously that's what I was going through at the time. And a lot of things that I completely did not expect to happen after having a baby, like how difficult the postpartum recovery was, not wanting visitors after bringing Milo home from the hospital. I was not expecting those things at all. And so I was like, I'm going to write about them and write about them like super honestly. Uh, and then when I started posting those blogs and talking about these topics on Instagram, I don't even know if my name was the mom room at that point. Um, people were just messaging me nonstop, like, oh my God, I relate to this so much. I didn't want visitors either. And a lot of the time it's like, they felt the same way, but they didn't advocate for themselves or stand up for themselves or tell family that they didn't want visitors uh, because they felt bad, which... I totally understand that. Um, but yeah, so people loved like hearing my perspective on things and what I was going through and found comfort in it because they went through the same things, but nobody really talks about it. So then I joined TikTok and then I started kind of combining the content into TikTok. So the same kind of topics and content, but in TikTok form, which was actually like, it's super fun. Um, and then, yeah, I just switched everything over to the mom room and now that's kind of my focus. Um, and then the podcast, I started in quarantine because I was like, what else am I going to do <laughs> in quarantine? Uh, so yeah, that's kind of how it started. Um, oh, swimming lessons. I miss doing swimming lessons. Sorry, I'm just reading the chat. So I, it might sound like I'm all over the place. I miss swimming lessons so much. And are they open? Like, I can't imagine them opening swimming lessons. New mom, and it's hard. Honesty. Oh, thanks, guys. If they're at the park, yeah, then you have to assume that they're on the same page as you. Totally. Extra friendly. <laughs> it's so true. Uh... Yes. So with regard to TikTok, I love TikTok because you can find amazing content on there and it's literally just 15 second little entertaining clips. Um, one of the guys that I interviewed on the podcast, Mr. Chaz, he was kind of one of the first accounts that I followed where he was giving such valuable information in just like a 15 second little video where he's dancing. Uh, and I would get so much value out of his TikToks. And so I think after like seeing how he did that, I started to think about putting actual content from my blogs and thoughts that I was having into a TikTok so that they weren't just like 
funny videos, but they actually were saying something um, also. But it is tricky to make those ones as entertaining as just funny ones, but uh, <laughs> get your own diaper. Yeah, and you know what's funny about TikToks is I will have such what I think is a hilarious idea and I will make this TikTok, I'll watch it over and over and like laugh my ass off and then I put it out and then it doesn't even do that well. And then I'll make another TikTok within like two seconds, just, you know, in passing, I have this idea and I make a TikTok quickly and post it and then it like blows up. So you like, I never know which TikToks are going to do well and which are not, but that one that you were talking about, about um, telling the dad to get their own diaper, that's the one that Jillian Harris shared on Instagram. And I woke up one morning and I had like 900 messages from people saying, oh my God, Jillian Harris shared your TikTok. Uh, so yeah, that one is definitely popular. One thing I wanted to ask you guys, because I love this question so much and I don't know why, but I'm fascinated by knowing this, is who was everybody's childhood crush? Like, really think about it. Like, who was your number one crush when you were younger? Jesse McCartney. That's that's interesting. I haven't heard that one, I don't think. So mine was Zach Hansen from Hansen. I love Hansen. And Jonathan Taylor Thomas from, yes, JTT, like, a hundred percent. JTT was my first from Home Improvement. Yes, Kathy. Oh, this is so true. Some of the TikToks, yes, they go out. And the thing about a lot of the, it's funny because Alana just came in and she's going to be like, why are people just naming off 90s heartthrobs? Alana, who was your childhood crush? This is like my favorite question and I love knowing who people loved when they were younger. So let us know. Mine was Zach Hansen and Jonathan Taylor Thomas. But to Kathy's point. Oh, Hi. hello. Hi, babe. I'm, I'm good. I, I was AC Slater. Just going to put it out there. Mwah. I loved AC Slater. Yeah. What can I say? Give, uh, I've never heard that answer before. AC Slater? Yeah, I like the Buffy yeah. ones. I like the ones who can dance, and I still think he's. And cute. do you do you still love him? Oh, really? I still love him. That's like, can you What's say hi to Renee? Hi, hi, Renee. <laughs> All right, guys, happy Mom Fest. Enjoy, Renee. You're so funny. Okay, Keep it up. Bye, <laughs> bye, bye. AC Slater, that is hilarious. Um, okay, so Kathy made a good point. So sometimes I put out TikToks talking about a certain thing and it's not meant to be controversial. It's just um, like, a, like it's just what it is. Like, for example, I don't enjoy playing with toddlers. My own, I can tolerate for like a half hour. And I don't think that's not normal. I think that's fairly normal. I'm an adult. I don't find it that um, enthralling, I guess. But yeah, so you, I'll make a TikTok of some kind of topic along those lines that's just literal like hard truth and then it becomes this big controversial debate and i know my mom loves reading all the tiktok comments on my videos like she will spend and mom i know this is true like she'll spend an hour just reading tiktok comments and then she'll message me like did you see what this person said and i'm like no i didn't see what this person said uh, okay jesse mccartney jtt AJ, AJ, the, so, Christian Slater, Christian freaking Ashley Parker Angel from O-Town. This is so random. See, this is why I love this question. Uh, I love that you don't seem phased by it. Does it ever bother you? Sometimes, like, there's different levels of comments that people can say to me. So, Sometimes the comment is, you know, they're just a miserable person and you don't really think twice about the comment because it's just so ridiculous. But then there's other comments that are like, you know, the person is like, has thought out what they're going to say. And, you know, they obviously um, 
you know, have a different opinion than maybe what I said in the TikTok, or they don't share the same experience as me, um, which is fine. But initially, I think I will get defensive, which is something that I think all moms struggle with is getting defensive as soon as somebody doesn't agree with your opinion. And then I try, I, if I feel myself getting defensive, I won't respond right away. I'll kind of sit on it for a little while. Um, because otherwise I'm just reacting out of like being defensive and I don't want to do that. So I'll sit on it and then I will kind of write them back or sometimes I'll screenshot the comment and post it and then respond to it like with them being anonymous. Um, if they actually make a good point and they just have a different opinion or maybe they made me view something in a different way. And so I will just share that with everyone um, so that people can see like people can have different opinions and we don't have to like fight about it. But my initial reaction is definitely sometimes like, Ugh, like because I think that's just a natural reaction, especially for moms. Corey from Boy Meets World is random. My one good friend uh, liked his friend on the show, Ryder Strong, which is also random. So does anybody have any other questions? I haven't heard my dogs bark once, which is shocking actually. And I have my my gang. I don't know if you can see these guys. I hear you've got a book on the go. What's that about? So somebody approached me. I've always wanted to write a book. Even before I started my PhD, I always remember going to the meeting with my supervisor and he asked like, what are you going to do with your PhD? Like, why do you want to do a PhD? And I said, I don't know, write a book because really I just wanted to stay in school because I love being in school. So somebody approached me because I always talked about writing a book and I love writing the blog posts. So ideally I wanted to kind of take the topics from the blog posts that I write and like all the content that I do on Instagram, TikTok, whatever, and write a book and like go deeper into the topic. So somebody had approached me, an editor about writing and you know, she would work with me to, to get it written. Um, and so I started doing that and working with an editor was, it's a little bit stressful because it's very like time sensitive. So you're like, they hold you accountable for like submitting chapters to them, which is great because otherwise I wouldn't get anything done. Um, so yeah, I think I wrote like three or four chapters and then we found out that we had to move or find a house and move really quickly because um, we rent the house that we're currently in now and he wants to put it up for sale because the market in the GTA and I think everywhere is insane. So we started looking for a house, which was super stressful. And so I told her that we were just going to go on pause for a little while. Um, so I think I'm going to start writing again after Christmas once we're settled in our new house. And yeah, so the book is basically going to be all the things that I love to talk about, like postpartum recovery, um, not wanting visitors after giving birth, mom guilt, being the default parent, um, all those things and really like dive into them and make a book out of it. So that's, that's my goals. Oh my God, your friends <laughs> questions are amazing. <laughs> Isn't she? I'm waiting for my mom to ask a question. Mom. Let's see if my mom's in here. Yeah, she is. And she's not participating. So yeah, that's the book. She keeps popping in and out like a whack-a-mole. Tell us about your awesome mom. Uh, the default parent. Yes. It's, it's so true. And so many things that I kind of like low-key felt, you know, since becoming a mom were like 
exacerbated during quarantine. And it was like, oh my God, all the feelings that you, that I kind of had just like were amplified in quarantine, which is where I was able to like recognize all these things that just, that's just our family dynamic. And it's not that it's wrong or it's anyone's fault. It's, that's just how our family kind of ended up working and which I don't think is uncommon because my husband works a lot, um, especially in quarantine, I was home. So yeah, default parent is, is like, it's a whole different thing. And it's hard for, I think, the person who's not the default parent to understand what that's like. And a lot of it is not even like physical tasks. A lot of it is mental like the mental load of constantly having to think two steps ahead or planning for whatever is coming next. Um, yeah, it's a lot. And daycare related, your opinion? Starting daycare full time without a transition. So for us, like obviously Milo started daycare for us um not during covid so it was very different he you know we got to see the daycare before we signed him up and he went for a little visit i was with him like parents were one you know a while ago parents were allowed into the daycares which is crazy that we're not now but anyways i went in with him for a visit then he went for like an hour and then the next day he did an hour and had lunch and like we just kind of gradually um put him in however my friend kathy who is in the chat she started her daughter in daycare during covid so recently and she had an amazing transition and I think she did half days um, and then moved into full days and also did like two or three days for the first week and then two or three days for the next week and then went into full time. So the downside is that she started earlier than her going back to work full time, but it does make for probably an easier transition for both the child and for the parent because I think sometimes those situations are harder on us than it is on the kid like most kids transition very well yeah exactly that's another thing daycare is so expensive that you know to do this nice transition that is ideal you're you're paying for it um and I don't even think daycares right now are doing part-time um, kids because they have to keep the kids in, you know, tiny cohorts. Um, and so it just doesn't make sense to do part-time. Yeah. Okay, guys, there's two minutes left. I can't believe that was a half hour. I feel like, what the hell? If you guys have more questions or you wanna chat about something, um, just go to my Instagram. I think I'm going to dedicate one full day soon to just answering messages on Instagram because I'm so behind because I've had this sinus infection. So thank you guys so much for coming. I'm happy we got to talk about some stuff. Um, and I presented my mom poster stuff to my husband last night for nothing, but that's okay. <laughs> he needs to hear these things. Okay. Bye guys.